Hi guys, welcome back. So you would think with all of the popularity of World War II German figures these days and the sheer number of tutorials that I've already done on the topic that, you know, pretty much all the variants that people are going to use with any regularity would have been covered by now. But that actually turns out not to be the case as at least several viewers have pointed out to me, so you could kind of think of this as a user request video. Well, I've covered all kinds of camo patterns and special equipment and specialist uniforms. I've never actually just dealt with a basic bare bones plain German soldier. And to be fair, if you're looking for how to do that, if you watch all of my other videos, you can kind of glean everything you need to know to paint a regular soldier from them. But I can understand how it's just more convenient to have it all in one place and not having to kind of search around and put it together. So this week I have grabbed this guy to paint for you. And that's exactly what we have here, as you can see. It's a very basic, standard, run-of-the-mill German soldier. He's got a stick grenade here, and he's got a normal German uniform on, no camo, nothing fancy, and all the sort of most typical equipment that you'd expect a German soldier to be carrying. Uh, you can see he's already base coated, his skin ha has been prepped. Uh, by the way, this guy is from Crusader. Uh, I've done a couple things by them before, they're not a whole lot, but I do like their style because they have the denser, kind of chunkier style of figures that I really do prefer to paint. So that's what we're going to be doing this time. Nothing fancy, nothing particularly uh, unusual or different. I'm just going to show you how to paint your sort of standard World War II German hair. So I'm going to get started right away here with painting the uniform. And of course, the first step in that process is to get a base coat going. Uh, I'm going to be using Vallejo German Camouflage Dark Green for that. And because we've used a black base coat in this case, uh, that's also going to kind of help in establishing a nice, deep, dark sort of starting point and sort of uh, perform a function of, you know, building up additional contrast. My first highlight on the uniform here is a mixture of the German camouflage dark green and German uh, field gray World War II. I should point out at this moment that there is actually another uh, uniform color for Germans by Vallejo just called German Uniform World War II or something. I think it's kind of a different shade though. It's, it's, it's more sort of on the um, bluish side. It's a brighter, mintier green, I guess. Uh, I personally don't like it as well. I, I kind of prefer the more grayer green type of German uniform, but especially if you're doing really early war guys, or if you want to get a little more variation in unit, you might consider using that color instead. Anyway, I'm just going to layer this sort of uh, first highlight on in pretty much all, you know, parts of the uniform. I'm only just really avoiding now uh, dividing lines, seams, and deep, deep creases, all the kind of pl natural places you would expect to want to stay really dark. The next highlight here, then, is just pure uh, German field gray, World War II. I have the paint thinned enough so that it flows uh, well, and I'm just going to now really start building it up on areas where uh, light is going to be hitting, progressing slowly as I do with lighter colors in, in increasingly small amounts in less places. You can see, of course, how I build it up on the knee and how I'm sort of lining creases with it. This is a new technique. It's not, I don't know if it's a new technique. I mean, a lot of other people do it, but something I've started working on recently, or at least I've gotten a lot better at it recently, is that if you have a really sharp line or crease in your fabric that's quite dark, it's, it works really well. You get this really crisp, nice, realistic effect. If you then sort of write underneath the bottom of that crease, where, in other words, where it's really dark, you run very sharply a line of uh, a lighter color, and, uh, and you know, and, and you'll, as you'll see as I continue highlighting with brighter colors here, I'm going to continue emphasizing that sort of dividing line with, very subtly of course, but with those lighter colors. And anyway, it lets you create these really believable but really nice, sharp looking creases in the uniform. In order to continue highlighting, you're gonna you have to find something to mix into the field gray. And the color I've gone for here is uh, Vallejo Dark Sand. It's sort of a, I don't know, a little bit of a dirty yellow color, but pretty light. Um, I find that 
a yellow is a very good uh, tone for lightening these German uniforms. And even if you don't have dark sand, it's not that fussy. You could use probably buff, um, you know, any other sort of color in that family. Even Iraqi sand would work, though that's a little bit more of a pinky red color. So it's going to give you a slightly, but probably not unpleasant effect. So the first time, I'm not going to mix too much of it in. I'm going to keep things subtle. And you can see here, I'm applying it to areas where light is hitting the uh, uniform and blending it out, you know, into the more dark, shadowed areas, like between his legs and his th the backs of his, you know, kind of thighs, because they're kind of, the way he's bent and posed, that area is going to stay dark. And I'm emphasizing along, especially along the edges of creases and folds a lot, using this color. Now continuing on, I've just added even more of that dark sand into my mix and I'm just going to keep adding stronger and stronger highlights to areas that I want to be light. You can see me, as usual, emphasizing the knees and the long um, you know, divisions in the fabric. And you can see again that where I was talking about running uh, lines of the bright color really sharply along the bottoms of areas where there's a deep crease. And you can see I'm really doing that now. Really, you can really start to see the really nice effect that that produces. Now I would say, depending on how much time you want to spend on painting your figure and how far you want to go, I would consider this highlight that I'm applying now probably to be uh, probably sufficient for a really nice look. I mean, you could probably even stop in the step before it also is going to be a little bit to your taste. You know, how dark you like your uniform or how light you like it. And that's actually also a way to add variation to a unit. You can choose to uh, leave some uniforms darker and highlight some more so it looks like some guys have lighter, more worn uniforms or that they're fa they're, the fabric for their uniforms was made from a different factory. And you get a much more interesting overall effect if you've got a lot of figures and you go ahead and do that. And of course, you just applying less layers is gonna save you time. So that's a big consideration. So anyway, I would say you could probably step after this step and you would still have a great figure. I did continue on with one final highlight after this just by adding in a pretty substantial amount of extra dark sand. And when I did that though, I used that color really only as an edge highlight. So very finely, thinly along sleeves. Um, to align the pockets wherever there's trim just as very lightly to really make some um, of those uh, creases pop and then only on areas where the fabric was already really highly highlighted and I feel felt like it needed even more extra contrast so it wasn't necessary like in the darker areas of the uniform but it, it did definitely help in some of the brighter lighter areas to get that extra level of tone going. Next, I'm going to be working on the black and gray areas of the uniform. So the first step to that, of course, is just to get a good black base coat going. Uh, even though we undercoat the model in black, that's usually not sufficient, mostly because the coverage is not good enough. And that um, I find that my base paint that I use is a little bit shiny. So you're going to want to go over it with normal uh, black acrylic. So in this case, this soldier's got boots on. He's a bit of more of an early war. I guess I'd say in terms of his uniform and equipment and I'm going to be kind of continuing to paint him that way. Besides the boots, you're going to want to make sure you base coat his stick grenade, his, all of his belts and belt packs, his suspenders. Um, you're going to want to get the top part of his water bottle, the straps on his bed, and of course that sort of little metal canister up top. Actually, you don't have to do that black gray. I like to do mine black gray. Another color those commonly wore was sort of a dark green. Um, but I like to, you know, I, I like to make sure that when I'm painting that equipment bundle that you don't have too many pieces of equipment next to each other that are all the same color. And because I'm going to be painting some other things in dark green there, I don't want that to be green, if that makes sense. Now all the black areas are going to receive a first highlight of Vallejo German Grey. And I, this is a great highlight color no matter what you're going or how far you're going in highlighting. It just works. One thing I am doing here uh, is being a little bit more careful with my application of this color. Sometimes I apply a German gray rather sloppily and you know that works but I have started to realize that if you're a little bit more careful you'll just get better results and that's especially important like on these boots because they're a big black area you've got to handle there and there's folds and wrinkles and it you know and it, putting a little extra attention to detail there even with this first uh, highlight even though it's really hard to see actually against the black it pays off so 
And also on those uh, stick grenades, I'm going to be a little bit more careful here, too, to really pick out each of those little cans precisely and neatly. Next, I have taken a bit of Vallejo Sky Grain. It's a very light gray, so you don't need much. And I've mixed just a tad of that into my German gray. You could also work with neutral gray, which is a slightly darker color. And if you use that, then you'll probably need more to uh, lighten your color. But I had Sky Gray on hand, so that's what I went with. With these kind of things, it doesn't really matter so much. It just has, it's more just how much paint you're going to need to add basically so I, I didn't want too much yet because I wanted this step up the next step from the neutral gray to be pretty gradual here but you can see now I'm starting to pick out some of the slightly lighter areas and being especially careful on the boots to be precise with the folds and wrinkles and you know make sure that I define clearly lots of different areas of color Obviously, on the smaller piece of equipment, you can afford to be a little bit faster because they're so small, there's no real place for any blending there, and it's just about kind of uh, picking out the edges of the different little pieces uh, carefully. And, you know, especially with, like, the stick grenade there, for example, you're going to want to focus these lighter highlight colors really towards the top and then let it sort of be darker and less highlighted down towards the bottom. I've now mixed even more sky gray in to lighten the sort of mix I already had even further. And you can see I'm working away on the boots. Um, I find that with black leather, you need to highlight it higher than some other black and gray areas because you want to get a little bit of that feeling of shininess and reflectiveness. But at the same time, you don't want to go overboard with it or it starts to just look weird. But you can see how I'm using it very subtly, sparingly here to pick out really around the boots and areas where I think there would be a slight reflection like on the back of the, of the calf there and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to use it as well to do some highlighting on his suspenders and belt, belt pack sort of along the edge really. Again, not very much blending. I'm at this point, I'm not going to be continuing to highlight the metal canisters or stick grenade very much more because those are sort of a, supposed to be a dark, sort of dull metal, and I don't want to get a lot of light, shiny effects going on those. So I'm going to be skipping that. I mean, you might want to. Maybe if there's some really sharp, like, bits on those, you might want to just use a little tiny bit of this gray here and there where there's a lot of light hitting, but in general you don't really need to highlight those areas further and I'm just kind of reserving these lighter gray tones for getting the extreme highlights on the leather bits. And in that same vein I made one final really extreme mix. It's mostly sky gray here but with a little darkening down and I'm going to use that now just to do a little bit of very subtle edge highlighting on the leather straps along the edges and on, you know, all those, just to help pick it out and emphasize things just a little bit extra. Uh, now for his various equipment. Uh, I'm going to start out here by base coating some of the sort of brown khaki areas, which are, in this case, his water canteen, or the bottom half of it, which I'm base coating here in English uniform, and the um, bedroll, which is going to be a camo thing because these tarps were it's the zelt bound basically and they had sort of like a splinter pattern on them and so i'm base coating that using just vallejo khaki and then once i've got the base coat on both areas i'm going to give them each a generous wash of agrax earth shade to sort of highlight both of these pieces, I've just taken that dark sand and mixed the, it into the khaki and the English uniform respectively. And you can see I'm applying then that sli those slightly lightened colors to the higher areas, blending it out a little bit. Uh, depending on you know how fussy you want to get, you can then go on and add even more of the dark sand in to get then sort of a second highlight and then apply that again. I often do that because I often almost, well, I should say almost never find just one highlight on something sufficient. I always feel like I need to add at least two to get, you know, a sufficiently nuanced result. Now I'm going to just quickly do the uh, splinter pattern. This is such a small area, you don't have to be any camouflage painting expert. You just want to get some kind of jaggy brown spots and green spots, and preferably more green than brown. So for the brown I hear, I have used uh, German camouflage black brown, and for the green I hear I'm using German camouflage dark green. 
And then once I've got that down, I'm going to highlight them for the brown. I've mixed um, some of that English uniform with some of the dark sand and a little of the German camouflage black brown. And for the green, I've mixed a bit of olive green into the dark um, green. And I'm just going to see, oh, sort of lightly blend those over the top. Now for the helmet and the gas mask container, which are both kind of a very dark gray, black, green color. So to make this, I have started out by mixing German gray with the German camouflage dark green to get this sort of black or green shade. And I'm applying that now as the base coat to both of those two areas. Now in order to highlight, I'm going to take that dark green gray mixture from the last step and I'm going to just lighten it very subtly using a tiny bit of the olive green not too much because you don't want this to get very green but mostly I'm going to be using sky gray uh, it just makes sense because this is sort of on the grayer side but again we want to stay very dark so just a tiny tiny bit is all you need at this point uh, when it comes to highlighting the, the gas mask can canister you can be a little bit more stark just because there's a lot of fine ribs and details in there that need to be picked up the helmet needs to look really smooth and blended and subtle so you have to be careful so you can see for that first highlight I'm really uh, applying it to kind of all of the helmet except sort of that crease or that line where that slope at the base sort of meets with the actual pot that covers his head and then I'm just going to continue lighting that shade so I've now mixed in a little bit more sky gray it's just a little bit lighter and you can see how I'm very carefully picking out around the edge and I'm always sort of applying it to the very top bowl of the helmet very thinly and then blending it out very carefully you, you really have to be subtle when you do this as I said on the helmet and I wouldn't add too many layers of highlight because it's, it's just too hard to get that to look good whereas on the gas mask container you can add more highlights so you can see I'm using the same colors, but I'm going to go farther. So I'm going to add more sky gray in and get a lighter color than I used on the helmet. I'm going to use that to pick out the ribbing on the container and sort of all the little edges and locks. And you can see I'm focusing it really towards the top and front where the light would be hitting and making sure that sort of the base and bottom stays dark and more shadowed. You can take this lightest color and run it sort of as an edge highlight around the base of the helmet if you want, but I wouldn't have put any more on the actual top part. Next I'm going to be base coating the leather and wood areas. There's not too much brown leather on here, but there are a couple straps on some of his um, containers. So I'm using uh, German camouflage black brown for that. And you can see I'm also putting on the wood, so on the handle of the stick grenade and also on the stock of his rifle here. I'm going to highlight the leather and brown uh, initially in the same way. So I have chocolate brown here and I'm applying that to both the gun stock and those leather areas. Uh, my chocolate brown is fairly uh, transparent so it's pretty easy to blend it. You can see I'm just kind of putting it on thinly and then I'll build it up a little bit more in some areas that I want to feel uh, slightly lighter. I'm then going to really quickly highlight the leather by using some thin down beige brown along the edge and then a really quick, really worn highlight by mixing Iraqi sand into the beige brown and just applying that very sparingly on the sort of the most worn areas. Now even though we started out the same way with the wood, obviously I want it to look different from the leather. So my next highlight on the wood here is a mixture of orange brown and chocolate brown. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using orange brown by itself. It's a very intense, very, very orange color and it will really quickly overwhelm anything you apply it to. So that's why I sort of cut it 50-50 with the chocolate brown. So you can see I'm going to apply it pretty generously all over the gun, but it, just taking care to sort of blend it out enough and leave, you know, distinct areas of shadow and sort of dividing lines in the uh, rifle stock in particular. I'm then going to highlight that wood further by mixing some tan yellow into the uh, color that I just used. You can see I've actually mixed in quite a bit because you can see how much lighter it is. And I'm going to apply it thinly and sort of layer it and sort of blend it. You can see how I'm applying it again sort of to the, all the edges of the wood pieces along any, you know, separate parts and so that's brightest there and sort of blending it out. And this should seem familiar if you've seen me paint wood before. I mean, often I will do this using foundry colors, but I thought it might be nice for a change just to do this with Vallejo, so I am. So 
you can see I do sort of one kind of overall blended out layer and then I will kind of add uh, more again just at the edges to build it up and get it a little bit stronger. I then went ahead and mixed in even more tan yellow uh, because I felt like there wasn't quite enough contrast on the bright areas yet and so I used that extremely light color really as an emphasis along sort of sharp edges and dividing lines just so that the wood would really stand out all that much more. At this point I'm going to be painting insignia. Now you don't have to do this and depending on the figure it might not even be necessary but I thought I'd show you how in case you're interested now, and because I feel like this German's uniform and his overall look is kind of early war I'm gonna be painting him that way uh, with the insignia as well so I'm putting putting things on his helmet because early war helmets often had these later on they kind of stopped so you can see I'm putting two sort of black type shield shapes on both the left and right side I'm also going to take a mixture of extra dark green and a bit of black and make two sort of rectangles on his collar which will hold the, his insignia. Then you want to take some uh, sky gray here. You can put a little green in if you want and use that to edge along his epaulets. On just a normal private, run-of-the-mill soldier like him, the epaulets would just be the green of the uniform but then with sort of that light gray green stripe along either side. And depending on how neatly you painted earlier, you may need to go back in and clean up the middle of those epaulets as well. Um, I'm then going to go ahead and take some white paint and I'm going to finish off those collar insignia just by painting two white uh, horizontal bars very carefully and kind of connecting them a little bit on either side. I shouldn't have to say that you want to use really thin down white paint when you're doing this in a real small brush. I'm working with a double zero here because it's just easier with this kind of small insignia work. And then I'm going to go back to the shields on his helmet. So on the left side in the shield there's going to be a little sort of like Reich's Eagle type shape and I'm sort of just kind of making an indication of something here that's going to look like that. If you want to get really insane you can make it brighter white at the top and a little darker towards the bottom. Now the shield on the right side has sort of a black, white, and red sort of diagonal stripe pattern. The white diagonal stripe is in the middle so you can see I paint that first and then I just go in and clean everything up a little bit with some black and a little bit of green around the edge. And then I'm going to finally do the bottom sort of third of the shield in red. So I base coated it real quick with just a dab of Mephiston red here from Citadel and then put a daub of Evil Sun Scarlet on top just as a highlight. Really the last thing left to do on this figure are the steel metal areas. I've made a mixture of German Grey and Vallejo Air gunmetal here and I'm going to start base coating them and so that mostly means painting all of the sort of metal parts of the gun that are exposed and then just also a few little bits and pieces on his uniform like the buttons, his belt buckle. I also like to put a little bit of metal wear off on the top of his canteen and on that sort of metal uh, canister that he's carrying because they were kind of metal and I like to you know indicate that they took a little bit of wear. I'm then going to make a highlight just by taking a little bit more gun metal and mixing it into my base. And I'm going to use that mainly on the gun because there's bigger metal areas there so I feel like it needs more subtle highlighting and I'm just going to use that to pick out you know the different pieces of the gun more clearly leaving that dark color down in all of the different dividing lines. And then finally I'm just going to take some pure uh, Vallejo Air gun metal and I'm going to use that as a real bright highlight, especially on the belt buckle and buttons because they really need to stand out. And I'm going to use it on the gun too, though I'm going to keep that a little bit more subtle. I'm just going to kind of lightly pick out the highest areas and just, you know, be a little bit more careful because you want your gun not to get too shiny or bright because, you know, that's not really realistic. Okay, so here is our sort of general run-of-the-mill World War II German soldier wearing a more early wear uh, uniform. I'm really pleased with how this figure came out, even though I really have painted a gazillion of these guys, and I can about do it in my sleep, so maybe that's why I've gotten good at them. But I don't know if you get that feeling, but I mean, we get better at figure painting, you know, gradually, of course, all the time we're working, but you don't really notice it. But then sometimes you'll just have this sort of eureka moment, I guess, for lack of a better word, and you'll feel like your pain just suddenly got 
a lot better really quick. It's like a video game, like you just level up or something. And everything is like, boom, a lot better. I don't know. I've kind of had that feeling a little bit recently with my figure painting. It just suddenly I felt like I got a lot better or, okay, maybe not a lot, but it, 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 I felt noticeably better to the point where I really saw it myself. In any case, uh, I do hope you found this useful, having all the sort of information you need to paint this sort of basic staple of any German army and that, you know, having all that information you need in one place, easy to access. Uh, so again, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, share it, leave me comments with what you thought. Um, please subscribe to my channel, of course, if you have not done so already, and you can keep up with what I am up to that way. And I think that is all for now, and I will see you next time.